Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Let's continue. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 now. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. It says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. What did he give us? Exceeding great and precious promises. So how did he make us partake us through the promises? He left promises that when we access and walk in that reality, we will be partakers of that divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss. Bless your word tonight. And in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will increase us. Amen and amen. Last week, I started teaching on the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. I'll be teaching along that lines, not exactly the same thing, but then I want us to listen very carefully because for many people, the subject of the blessings of God, divine supplies, wealth and prosperity has always been seen as the activity of carnal people, those who do not love God and those who don't want to grow spiritually. But that is not true. I took out time to explain to you that the fight for resources is the fight for the souls of men. Remember my teaching? Yes. And that there will always be a demand by Satan to give your soul in exchange for material things. So it's not just that your soul, listen carefully, it's not just that your soul is given to the devil but that your spiritual growth and your spiritual health is mortgaged for the purpose of material supplies. And I gave you a litmus test that you can know you have fraternized with this system when your wealth grows as your spirit dies. Satan will never allow both your soul and your pocket to rise together. When your pocket begins to rise, he will come and negotiate that your spirit goes down. Are we together? And that has been the system. So people give up the activities that make for the health of their soul to look for money. But in the name of Jesus, there is a generation of men and women rising by the Spirit of God who will prosper even as their souls prosper. And so I told you there is a warfare dimension that the king of Tyre, Satan himself, sits upon that mountain that represents the economy of the earth. And we're going to look at the second aspect today. And I'm just going to talk to you two words, basically, that we'll be teaching um, along those lines. And then God will grant us grace. Genesis chapter 1, please. Genesis chapter 1 
when God made man, he gave a command. And the first word that man heard from God, according to verse 28, And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful. Everybody say it after me. Be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Number three, replenish the earth. Number four, subdue it. That these four dimensions is what makes for dominion. That for the saints to at any point command dominion, all of these dimensions must be captured in their experiences. You must have the ability to be fruitful. You must have the ability to multiply. You must have the ability to replenish and then to subdue. I'm not talking about all of those dimensions. I just want to connect something. I did a teaching before we went on a short break on be fruitful. Please, you need to get it. It's very, very important because I want to start building from there. God is a God of increase. God is a God that desires the saints to increase and to be fruitful. And um, when the Lord mandated man to be fruitful, please leave the scripture there. Many theologians have taught that what God meant by be fruitful is just biological fruitfulness, like have children and replenish the earth. I, I believe there is a dimension of that. But as I began to study this, the Lord opened my eyes to certain dimensions. And that's where I want to start with tonight. That there are at least five levels or five areas where God desires the saints to be fruitful. Write it down, please. Number one, the womb, or what you call fruitfulness, children. The womb. When God told man be fruitful, he meant to be able to carry seed up until delivery, and by so doing, multiply the earth. Number two, the mind. Be fruitful means that your mind must also be fruitful. Number three, your hands. Be fruitful. Your hands must also be fruitful. Number four, be fruitful. Your mouth, your lips must also be fruitful. Just follow me carefully. And then lastly, your spirit. So when God spoke to man and said, be fruitful, he was not just speaking to the womb of the woman. He was speaking to all of these dimensions of man. That the womb be fruitful. The mind be fruitful. The hands be fruitful. The mouth be fruitful. The spirit be fruitful. Are we together? The fruit of the womb is the child. The fruit of the mind is is ideas and creativity. Please write. When the womb gives birth, you call the child or you call the fruit a child. When the mind or your thoughts give birth, you call the fruit ideas. When the hands give birth, you call the child work or accomplishments when the mouth gives birth you call it words when the spirit gives birth you call it character and so all these dimensions must be captured in the experience of the believer if you are to walk in fruitfulness and if you are to challenge the powers that be we have dealt with the fact that there are spirits that sit upon this mountain and we agree that one of the ways that we challenge these spirits is by our allegiance to the system of the kingdom are we together we rounded up in the last meeting with the daniel where Daniel and the three Hebrew boys came and said, O king, we will not bow. 
we know that the way of safety and security is to bow to this idol but we have made up our minds that our god is able to deliver us are we together and so it is possible that we conquer these spirit influences by refusing to bow to these operations but it does not automatically translate into the blessings of the saints and I want to just guide you very briefly. Tonight, I'm talking very briefly on the power of productivity. The power of productivity. This is a very scarce teaching in the body of Christ and even in Africa. The power of productivity. Submitting to the government of Christ in the face of these controlling powers is not enough to deliver the inheritance of Christ to the saints. There is a weapon of mass destruction given to the saints wherewith we can paralyze the systems of darkness and possess what our possession is. The name of that weapon is productivity. Say productivity. Please write this down. There is a difference between value and productivity. There is a very huge difference between being valuable or value and productivity. Value talks of your inherent abilities. Value talks of your potentials value talks of your transactable skills that means that everything you piece together that can become an advantage in your life is called value but productivity is more than value are we together now just because you are valuable does not guarantee that you will be rewarded. The world is full of many valuable people. But in the face of economic hardship, even their value is not able to deliver to them the kind and the extent of supplies that they need. Are we together now? It is important to be aware of value. But just camping at that realm of value is not enough to empower the saints. Please write this down. Productivity is the quality or the ability to create, make, or enhance products and services that are needed and useful. I'll take it again. Productivity is the quality or ability to create, make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful. Never forget this, this definition. That productivity is the quality to be able to create and make products and services that are needed and useful. Look up, please, everyone. While value talks of your inherent abilities, productivity refers to a system where you turn those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful. It is not valuable people who are rewarded. It is productive people. Are we together? Please, you may write this down. Financial resources will always follow productivity, not necessarily value. Financial resources will always move the direction of productivity. Productivity also refers to the ability to make anything in abundance. The ability 
to provide the abundant supply of anything is productivity. So God has a system for our prosperity. He's a God of increase. In spite of the fact that there are giants on these mountains, Satan himself sitting at the helm of the economic affairs to manipulate the things into lack, into poverty, and by so doing, distract them so that they do not have the time to prosper and serve the purposes of the kingdom. And I'm teaching you that one of the weapons to bring victory, economic victory, is productivity. Any man, any woman, any church, any organization that is not productive will be poor. It's a law. Please listen carefully. Any man, any woman, any church, any business, any organization that fails to be productive, there is no system to authorize reward for a non-productive personality. Before I discuss a few things and a few ways that God can help us to be productive, let me destroy what I call the consumer mentality. Please listen to me, Africa. One of the greatest unbecoming of this continent is what we call a consumer mentality. Say consumer mentality. It is sin for God to give you a thing and then it shrinks and dies. And you cannot transfer the abundance of that to a generation. It is sin. Everything God gives men, He expects that they increase. In the parable of the talents, Matthew chapter 25, the Bible talks about three men who were given talents. One, five talents, listen carefully. The other two talents and then the last a talent. And the Bible says the one with the five went and made five more, increased. The other one with two went and made two more. But the one with one talent returned back and said, you are a hard man. You reap where you did so. And Jesus called him a name. He didn't call him lazy man. He said you are a wicked and unprofitable. That's the word, unprofitable. There is no gain trusting you wicked and unprofitable servant. Africa has been plagued and sadly, respectfully so, but sadly, our educational system has also contributed in building the consumer mentality. Are we together now? So, the, the whole idea of productivity is foreign to an average African and worst of it all to an average believer. The subject of productivity is not taught believers. We, we have been trained to ignore productivity. Let me tell you, I think the worst come is to expect life to give to you something. The Bible says give and it will be given to you. That's the law. It didn't say what you give is what must be given. But until you give, nothing should be given back to you. So if you do not give and you expect that something should be given back to you, it's amazing, my brothers and my sisters, how many of us, many of us even seated here, just believe that life will have a way and find a way of coming to bring resources to you to meet your needs. Just because God is alive does not mean your needs are met guaranteed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Productivity. So the average person thinks consumption. Give me, let me eat, it has finished. Give me another one, let me eat, it has finished. Daddy, give me this, it has finished. Productivity, we lack this grossly in Africa. Are we together now? Yeah. So people collect their salaries. And when they collect their salaries, the moment there is a short supply of that salary for two or three months, they are back because there was no productivity. There was money 
but no productivity. Are we together now? Yes. Productivity is a system of increase. In mathematics, we have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. And another name for multiplication, they say find the product of this. And you know that they are talking about multiplication. It's a system of increase. Woe betides any soul that does not understand the law of productivity. The days that are here now, not the days that are coming, will create a level of frustration upon that individual and all connected to that individual. We must understand productivity. God wanted the entire globe saved and he used one son. Productivity. Now he has gotten many sons in glory. The consumer mentality is the mentality that always believes in finishing what you have. Always believes in finishing what you have. It doesn't have to be financed, anything at all. The consumer mentality is the mentality that will always run dry. Always run dry. A mentality that never thinks increase, never thinks addition, never thinks multiplication. When you have a consumer mentality, when you come into the life of a man, you run that man dry. I don't mean a male figure, anybody at all. Are we together now? There are members with consumer mentality. They come to church and run the church dry. It doesn't have to be financially. Anything that comes from your life that does not add or increase is a consumer mentality. Great people are concerned with addition that because of your presence, you become a multiplier factor. Are we together? So your whole family is going down and here you show up and because of you, something happens in that family and begins to multiply. The greatest way to understand productivity is agriculture. Amazing how you can take a seed. Look up everybody. You plant that seed. Are we together now? And then you watch it. That orange seed, just give it a little time. It grows. The orange seed is not productive until it can hold orange enough. Are you seeing that now? Yes. In spite of the wind that will blow some other seeds, it has the stamina. And a few months after maturity, you begin to see oranges everywhere. Watch this. You will pluck the oranges. And after a while, it will start again. And you will pluck some more. And there are orange trees and other fruit trees that are older than people. The trees were there before they were born, yet they will still eat of it. That's productivity. Are we together now? No man who is productive becomes poor. No matter what Babylon wants to do or not. No matter what devil. No matter what charm, what cause. Productivity is not an idea for success. It's a weapon. Productivity is a weapon. A man of God who is productive will never have empty pews. A church, a ministry that is productive will never go down. A business that is productive will never see shame. The key is productivity. The key is not wishing. The key is not sentiments. The key is productivity. The ability to convert anything small to become big productivity. The ability to introduce a multiplier factor. I am productive. Who do I use? Come. I am productive to the degree to which I can multiply this gentleman's value, his usefulness. That he comes as a naive young gentleman and I have access to his life. And in six months, in one year, I transform this person by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is productivity. Are we together now? Let me say this respectfully. Any pastor that does not cause the members to increase and to be productive in the days that will come, will be ready for empty pews. The days of solidarity based on tribe, based on all this, are over. 
the determining factor for impact is productivity. We come from the same village, will soon be a joke. We have the same auntie. You are my elder brother, I'm your younger brother. No. People are desperate. He said that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains and over the hills. And the people will say, let us flow. Although upwards, but let us flow to that mountain. Are we together? Thank you. What does productivity involve? Let's discuss this quickly. Number one, the first key to productivity is healthy exposure. Write it down. The first key to productivity is exposure. Please, whether you are standing outside, whether, what, if you can listen, listen. If you can write, write. What's the first key? It's impossible to be productive until your mindset is stimulated by a new horizon to life, to God, whatever it is. I was blessed by the testimony of that gentleman. One testimony you were all laughing around. When the guy was doing his best to articulate and piece together every spiritual intelligence. You, you can see the, don't feel bad my friend, but you can see the scarceness of his revelation and access. You can see that he's just throwing anything spiritual. But he said, I want to start from that kindergarten. Give that gentleman two, three months under the correct atmosphere and you will watch a young man rise that will surprise you. You will forget that he was once the person who just came and spoke here. Productivity. Productivity. Anything that enters your hand multiplies. Anything that comes around your life increases. Are we together now? Everybody say exposure. Listen to me. Exposure is not a gift of the spirit. In fact, exposure is not even a gift of life at all. Exposure is a system where your horizon is expanded. Listen carefully. You will never rise beyond your mindset. I hope you know that. Zaria, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. This is one of the secrets of our limitation. We are limited. We are not bad. We are just limited. That all your life you have known life to be a particular way. And so you do not know there is more to life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Most people, their exposure is negative. Party and all of that. That's, how, that's why I said healthy exposure. That means there's an unhealthy one. Listen to me. If God wants to lift you and cause you to be productive, the first miracle that happens to your life is He can either shift you geographically or give you access to an environment that begins to expand your understanding. He will introduce a person he will introduce a system or he will translocate you to a region where your mind begins to be adjusted. Listen to me. That's why sometimes you receive miracles you know you didn't pray for. God is breaking that cycle of limitation. There is no basis for receiving when you can. There are many people who cannot. God cannot even tell them certain things. It's not yet a concept that can be received. They don't have a system built within them to receive it. Please listen very carefully. Exposure. I believe it's one of the reasons why the knot is very backward. I believe it's one of the reasons why the middle belt is the worst part of it. Because our entire family, supported by a lopsided communication of Christianity, has stabilized our mediocrity and kept us within a plane that doesn't even make allowance for growth. Listen to what I'm telling you. The average middle belter, the average northerner, has an extra project to do in trusting God to break that circle first. Because it is so bad that the slightest show of exposure can even be attacked as extravagance. This is how bad this spirit is. Exposure. 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 The ability to expose you. When God finds out 
that there is nothing around you that can relate to it, he would translate you to the realm of the spirit and say, still see. In any case, I need you to comprehend. That's what he did to Abraham. He kept telling Abraham, you will be a father of many nations. Abraham said, Amen, like we're saying. And God said, I can't work with you. You are, you are empowering delay in your life. And then one time he said, Abraham, come out. You have checked around and there is nothing that looks like. Lift up your eyes. See. Count the stars. He had been looking at the stars, but he never tried counting them. I'm looking for something I can use to, to, to parallel what I want to do in your life. So count the stars. So he will start one, two, three. Oh, God. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, one, God is impossible. That's it. He says, so shall your seed be. I, I have I planted something in you that you can now relate with. It says, and Abraham finally believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. Many times we do not have a basis for being blessed because we are limited. We came from a poor background. Now, I'm not insulting you, please. You are born to look like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. Listen carefully. I understand that you came from a background that may not allow you to rise. But somewhere along your life, you must make up your mind. Unfortunately, many of us make up our minds in an unhealthy way. You just sit and say, this poverty, I'm tired. I must start hustling. You have missed it again. Hmm. Exposure. So, the young carpenter from Galilee. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And every time he went to pray, his horizons were expanding. You see what Satan did to Jesus? He took him to an exceeding high mountain and said, you have not seen this one, at least not in the flesh. He says, look at it first. Let me expand your mind. Good marketer. When he saw everything, he said, let me make this work easy. It was only a temptation because of what Jesus saw. If Jesus did not see anything, it can be a temptation. Are you getting what I'm teaching you tonight? Everybody say exposure. It is the reason why there is a lot of advancement and there is ease of establishment in areas like, say, Abuja or Lagos and all of that. Do you know why? Because the environment, sociologically speaking, and infrastructurally speaking, is developed enough to subconsciously stimulate creativity. So you are passing and there's a mall that challenges you. And then they tell you this is the young man that owns it. And subconsciously, your mind continues to bank in challenges until you don't know when you sit down and say, Lord, there has to be something about my life. But in this environment, no matter what level you are, you are still a champion. You see how bad it is? Before or after school, you are still better than many people. Before or after being born again, you are better than many people. You waste your money. They say, no problem. You are better than us. There is nothing that challenges you. So you need a healthy exposure. There are people in their life who never bought cars. And the day you say, we are trusting God for a car, they look at you and say, what, what kind of nonsense is this? Must you live with a car? No, you mustn't, but it's better to have a car. Are we together now? Yes. Listen, one of the ways that Satan destroys men is to allow your mediocrity to reach the apex. Then he will now in, he will expose you by himself. That's why you can have a naive lady who never understood anything about life and a young guy can just come and carry her and say, my dear, let me tell you what this is. Let's go to a very big hotel or somewhere and she gets to eat a nice one and say, what is this? This is called this. This is called that. She doesn't know she's getting angry until she leaves that hotel and returns back home. And the mother says, ah, it's ready. Help me pour water on the firewood. Let's, let's just conserve it. And suddenly there is an agitation. But because it was wrongly done, she will make up her mind that that experience, I will not rest. She will find a way of going back. Nobody sees something better and rest. When new wine comes, something begins to happen. The old wine becomes tasteless. It's how God expands us. 
Many of us have never seen the advantage of living a blessed life. You have never really seen a blessed, godly person around you. Please look up, look up, look up, look up. Don't, don't feel insulted. But many of us have not had models of correct, blessed believers. You have seen struggling believers. You have seen believers here and there who are a bit they have today, tomorrow they don't have. You have not seen a portrait. So when the Bible says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord. There's nothing you can, you just, you just think it says, godly is the man. You know how your phone doesn't have some characters. And when you send text messages, it will use something else to replace it. My brothers and my sisters, the mind only begins to conceive when there is a reference. There has to be something. That's the reason why men and women of God must challenge themselves, even on this wise, to become worthy references. A ministry that has a prophet will easily have prophets as members because they can see a man prophesy. A ministry that has a millionaire will usually have people. The possibility that you see before you is what you become. That's what Jacob did to the animals. He simulated what he wanted them to become. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Many of you have not seen the excellency of a blessed life. The only thing you have heard about a blessed man, rich men are crooks, rich men are stupid, rich men are obsessed with money. They are the ones who destroy our country. Rich men are corrupt people. And when you hear that kind of thing, your mind has pegged that as the definition of wealth. So God exposes you to a man who is blessed and loves God. And you are seeing a reality that is foreign to your experience. I thought all wealthy people hate God. I thought all wealthy people are indisciplined cooks. Here I'm seeing a man that loves God. Then you have the opportunity to see his offering. You have the opportunity to see his tithes. You have the opportunity to see his prayer. And in it his righteousness endures. He will leave you with a mark. You will go back and say, Mama, I know we are in this hut, but there is a better life. Egypt, I know there is cucumber and there's carrots but there is Canaan mama there is Canaan let's trust God for grace and in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to you may you be the one to lift your family out of this place. please sit down exposure exposure creates dissatisfaction in your heart are we together you never knew that it was possible to pay a child's school fees beforehand. Because every time they paid your school fees, you were the last. You never knew that it is possible for somebody to not worry about money. It's not a reality that your mind can ever try to conceive. That there is such a realm where you sit down and the only thing that governs your appetite is the will of God. Not lack. Do you know and do you believe there is such a realm? Please listen to me. Such a realm where you are empowered to be a blessing. You get to a church and you see them struggling. Rain is hitting everyone. And you can just sign a check and say, please get canopies for these people. Let the name of the Lord continually be exalted. Let this not be what would discourage them. Your resources increasing even as your soul prospers. You cannot be productive until you see the advantage. There must be a system of recognition. You must see what it can do to you. Are we together? I never had the privilege to be around extremely wealthy people, just like most of us. Here and there we had average people. Some of us came from families that were average here and there. But extreme levels of wealth. Notice that this is one of the reasons why many of us, our educational background is very poor till today. We are still fighting that warfare. Let me tell you where it started from. It started because of the kinds of nursery and primary schools we went to. You went to a school that you start on stone. Now, I'm not insulting you. Are we together? Yes. A school where they teach in another language and they translate to you in whatever language you can know. Because that's what is obtainable. Are we together? How you pass your jersey is now that you know it was mercy and favor. Because you were certainly not ready. 
Now let me tell you, if you come from that kind of background, you will be surprised. The first thing you have to manage is complex, not assimilation. The moment you find yourself in the company of other people, their confidence will intimidate you. You will have to fail for a long time before you start building. Your own assignment at that point is not even to understand what they are teaching. To manage your complex. Just a question they ask you. Stand up and you cannot say your name again. You don't fail because you are bad. You fail because there is a backlog of something you are dealing with. Exposure is powerful. Exposure is powerful. The same way you grew spiritually... Because you were exposed to people who God had helped. Are you seeing that? When this ministry started by the grace of God, there were so many spiritual people. Someone would get born again in two weeks. Two weeks. When everybody is fasting, you won't have the grace to complain. When everybody is praying, you won't have the grace to be lazy. When there are programs and everybody is praying through the night, you will easily follow suit. Is that true? We are products of our environment. So God needs to grant us access to exposure. Now listen, I want to say something and please let it not hurt you. If for any reason you come from a polygamous family, or any kind of family for that matter, that did not model correct fatherhood, correct motherhood, correct brotherly love, you have an extra project to do on yourself. To trust God for grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you this. Now, I love my father. I love him with all my heart. And thank God for what he has become now. I say this respectfully. He's still alive. So I'm saying it very cautiously. But I love him. But I do not model his system of fatherhood. Especially in his youth. That's because his own father died when he was 10 years. So he spent his entire life hustling. He grew up a bit with his uncle who was a soldier. He was a what? A military man. So what do you think? His whole template was warfare and aggression. That was what he termed progress. And now, we happen to be the ones in the scene. And it was terrible. Especially being the first son. It was, it was a tug of war. It was almost like fight. To fight between myself and my father. Everything was aggression. You bring cold water for him to wash his hands. He won't say you are wrong. He will slap you. You fall with the whole thing. Then you go to the kitchen and ask somebody they slapped before. How did you manage that situation? Now please, don't you ever see my father. And my father is a born again loving man right now. He's a healthy and wonderful man. Are we together now? Yes, I respect and I honor him with my life and forever. So don't, don't think that, honor your father. I'm not just, he's, a, he's truly a good man. One of the most honest people I've seen in my life. But he was a victim. I have learned by experience that the concept of being bad does not really exist. Everybody is only an executor of his understanding. Because there is no bad dead body and there's no good dead body. There's only a dead body. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? And so that life of aggression, exposure. I didn't want it, but that was all I had seen. And so subconsciously as I started growing, I found out that my approach to life began to reflect that. You don't receive willingly alone. Once you are exposed to a system for a long time, it becomes all you know. That's why most people that complain about leaders, when they get there, they do the same thing. Because while they were complaining, they were becoming it too. Remember Animal Farm? Literature students. That's exactly what happens to people. And so my life started reflecting that. I was unusually aggressive. I said, no, 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 no. Something has to happen to my life. Lord, this cannot be my life. Ah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. 
It's amazing to what degree we reflect the things that modeled our minds. Whether you like it or not is a different thing. Respectfully speaking, if your mother was a cook and you saw her stealing daddy's money and called it smartness, you will be surprised what you do when you enter a relationship. You can finish praying in tongues right now and while you are praying, you just see 1,000 protruding from a trouser and you would drag it and drag it in the name of the Lord. You are a victim. Everybody say exposure. Zaria people, listen to me. The internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitations of our territory. I repeat, the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitation that comes with our territory. There are things we may never have seen and known, but for the power of the internet. The internet is like a gun. You can use it to destroy yourself or you can use it to build. Many of us, it is the power of the internet that gave us access to messages, to people, to dimensions. Are we together now? Just like some of us, it is the internet that destroyed us and planted wrong seeds in our minds. You can remedy for your lack of exposure. If it is costly to fly physically, let your mind go there. Listen carefully. The most important ingredient in your exposure is not your body, it's your mind. So when your body cannot get there, don't feel bad. Find a way of taking your mind to that location. And this is where the internet becomes a blessing. You don't have the privilege to attend a pastor's conference somewhere to bless your, your, yourself. But your mind can go there. Remember, I've taught you that when your mind gets somewhere, your body must follow. It doesn't matter what the resistance is. Yes, you don't have the privilege to have been born in Lagos. You don't have the privilege to have been born in the U.S. You don't have the privilege to have been born in any of the Western worlds. Apostle, I don't even know the name of my village. The last time I checked, I didn't exactly see it there. That's not the issue. Your body may not be able to go there. But God has orchestrated such that your mind can go there. Everybody around you was a bad father, a wicked man, a bad mother, a wicked woman. And God can just lead you to one 15-minute video on YouTube that translates you into the home of somebody who can re-mentor you and start correcting your wrong ideologies. Everybody say exposure. There's no excuse in our world today for remaining small, even financially. There is a system of exposure. There is a system of exposure. There is a system of exposure. Are we together? Number two, thank you. The second key to productivity, please write it down, is creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation. The second key to productivity. Remember I told you productivity is a weapon. You don't just fight by prayer alone. You don't just fight by fasting alone. Your productivity is a weapon. As God is exposing you and exposing your mind, you are fighting a warfare that you do not know. It's a warfare for your destiny. While you are exposing yourself, you are exposing it for your children, for your children's children. And then number two, creativity. Write this down. What is creativity? Creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas, imaginations, and dreams into reality. Creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas, your imaginations, and your dreams into reality. I saw this definition and it was so instructive. It also involves the act of turning your, um, transforming your ideas, imagination, dreams into reality. Full stop. It also involves perceiving the world in new ways, comma, finding hidden patterns and making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. It involves perceiving the world in new ways, finding hidden patterns, 
making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. Look up, please. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the Bible was not as a revealer, but as a creator. There was darkness. Genesis chapter 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says, now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is the Hebrew word tohu abohu, confusion and chaos. And the Bible says the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters because creation, recreation was about to start. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit was as a creative spirit. And listen to me, if you will conquer the king of Tyre, and if you will go up the mountain to bring wood and build the house of God, then you must be creative. The spirit of invention, the grace that can bet realities from the realm of the spirit. Please hear me. Any man that is not creative in this generation will die of hunger or be at the mercy of those who are creators. There is no reason for competition again. Creation is the key. The ability to translate possibilities from the realm of the spirit. Please give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. The Bible says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all we ask or imagine. The word there is imagine. It says, according to the power that worketh in us. Creativity. Unfortunately, our generation of young people have been stimulated into mental sleep. Our creativity level in this generation is almost zero. Thank God for the curriculum they used to bring those days in primary school. Quantitative reasoning. And uh, what's the other one? Verbal reasoning. This, our lazy generation now doesn't even understand anything that stimulates the mind. I'm not being insulted, but you ask a graduate a simple question. Just something he can think about. I mean, it's not there at all. Creativity is zero. Zero. So we like doing things the way everybody has done. You just carry somebody's project and change your name and adjust figures. Change five to seven. Change this and change address and stamp it straight to community market and present it. Creativity is zero. Many businesses. That's why when a business is wrong, many other businesses become wrong too because they don't think. They just copy. You must trust God for the grace. Listen to me. There is a level of creativity that can come upon you and bail your family forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. There is a spirit in man. Man is not an empty body. There is a spirit and the inspiration, that's the word, from the word inspire. The word inspire does not just mean to prime. It means to magnetize, like you bring a magnet close to something and you cause another metal to shift because of the magnet. That's the idea of inspiration. That the Holy Spirit, the author of wisdom can come close to you. And in physics, we call it resonance. Let, let's, let's talk a little physics more. Resonance. Are we together now? Yes. That when you use a tuning fork and you hit at a frequency, every other object within that frequency begins to resonate. That's how it is. So the Spirit of God comes and He does something to your spirit man and lifts you. He wants you to bet something. So He comes in that dimension and deep calls on to deep. You are seated in the room. There has to be a way. Lord, my family cannot just... I, I, listen, listen. I don't mean to be a prophet of doom. But let me tell you this. Robots are here to stay. That means jobs are already... Jobs are becoming like typewriter. Did you hear what I said? Jobs are becoming like what? Typewriter. Let's speak economics a little. Hear me, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God. I'm speaking in the spirit of Noah, telling you a flood is coming. Join this ark and join it fast. 
They laughed at Noah for 120 years. He kept telling them a flood is coming. There are more graduates in Nigeria than any level of development between now and the next 50 years can ever employ. Are we together? Masters is the new degree right now. You don't move around that you have a degree. Masters is the new... You go, they apply for a job looking for 80 people and about 12,000 people will write it. There are people who have finished since 15 years ago. They will eat first before it gets to your turn. So if you're a fresh graduate now, imagine that until 15 or 14 years, Babylon manipulating the system to make sure the stains cry, but there is a way, there is a spirit in man. Listen to me carefully. The the employment in any nation is private sector driven. There is no nation that the government handles their employment. No. Government has only limited parastatal. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And because they are working on cutting costs, usually they will make sure that as much as possible they cut costs. The employment rate in any nation is private sector driven. That means the more businesses you have, the more entrepreneurs you have, then they can be able to absorb people. Unfortunately, technology and information has replaced men. There is no reason why I should employ 1,000 people when I can employ 5 people and 5 computers. 737 of GT Bank alone made sure it blessed people one of their most successful products but with that many people may never get a job again because it was very efficient every businessman does business for profit i hope you know bank is business bank is not government property it's somebody's business look at graduates now all around there is nothing because there is a system and please listen to what i'm saying because when a father does not have something that brings resources and mother does not have something that brings resources they will both suffer and the children will suffer listen for the sake of your children my brothers and my sisters don't listen just for yourself let us read ourselves of this selfishness it doesn't matter it doesn't take very long before your child comes and then the reality will dawn on you. And while that is happening, Satan is manipulating the economy to make sure the prices of things go high. It's a double-edged sword. So that whatever direction you come from, you will be attacked. Listen. The average salary within this system is not more than twenty to 30000 Listen carefully. Am I telling the truth? There are only few places that can employ people in Zaria. Let me use Zaria. I'm talking to the whole world, but please permit my bias. Let me just address my people a little bit. The average salary is twenty to 30,000. Anything more than that is uh, until you have any federal government thing. And we know, no matter how careful you are in this life, twenty to 30,000 will not do you anything. No matter how stingy and greedy and even wicked, 20,000 will not be enough. Even if you are a thief, you will need more than that to steal. Calculate the amount to buy weapons, dress, and if more than that already. So no matter how you go around it, you are still in trouble by default. Now watch this. So you have a family of 10 people. How many people? Minus father or mother. And then one person out of the six graduates now manages to get a job of 20,000. And everybody is saying, oh, yeah, oh, now that God has blessed you, we were there for you. 20,000 divided by 10. So why won't your prayer life be affected? Why will you be able to pray? Where will you get the resources to marry? No, not marry Watch this. Where will you get the resources to marry? I'm being sincere with you. Marriage in Nigeria at any level is not cheap. Are, are we together now? 
Don't blackmail any territory. Marriage everywhere today is not cheap. You want to marry. You are discouraged yourself. The wife is discouraged herself. Your destiny is, is hanging in the balance. Because nothing... Remember you are born again. Remember you are filled with the Spirit of God. And Satan says exactly, this is how I want to manipulate the economy. Please listen, my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you this thing to bail you out so that you will have time. By the time this happens, members are not able to bring offerings, not able to bring tithes. And that means that projects cannot be executed and the man of God himself is stranded. So he has to invent another ungodly way. Are you getting it now? By manipulation. Remember, he didn't plan to be bad. The pressure, the rent on the auditorium, the rent on all of this. There are bills to pay, TV ministry. And he has to invent another theology that can supply. The solution, and I speak to you by the spirit of prophecy, is creativity. Listen to me. Creativity and innovation. There is a spirit in man. My brothers and sisters, there is a spirit in man. There are men and women that must arise. Let us not pray in tongues for nothing. We are not just praying in tongues to throw one another on the ground. The world does not understand that language. The language that conquers Babylon is bringing something that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Even Paul got to a place where it was his being a Pharisee his exceptional quality of knowledge that bailed him out. Right now, everybody laughs at the church because it looks like the church is a place for daft people and idiots. People who don't have any brain. Is that true? The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of prayer. The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of fasting. The spirit of revival is the grace for witty inventions on common manifestations of the hand of God. Listen, let me tell you this. Listen to me. Let me say this, and I, I, I don't know if I will sound proud, but please forgive me. Forgive me. When I started banking, I was taught that there are certain transactions you cannot do until you are there by yourself to sign your signature. As God increased me, I found out that it's not true. That rule was only for some people. Are you getting the point now? There are transactions today that I do that the bank manager himself is the one that does it. Now, listen very carefully. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling you when you are at the edge of creativity, there are rules that will be broken for you and your children. I told you about BVN. I didn't have the time to do BVN. I needed to do BVN in the bank and the, you know the queue, I told them, I said, I don't have this time. And they gave me time, 8.30. I went to the bank and they opened the bank for me. I sat down and did BVN. Is there anything, sir? Would you, are you happy? Would you like a drink? I said, ah, look at how unfair life can be. Listen to me. This is not some boasting or bragging. I want you to be apostolic in your understanding. This is not about money at all. This is about your soul and the gospel. Are we together now? Yes. Let us not keep our children in captivity, my brothers and my sisters. Standing between your parents and your children is you. We are that bridge. You can transfer what you receive. Or you can say, Lord, let me be the one to suffer it. Let my child not go through what I've gone through again. And God says, are you willing to be this savior for your family? And you say, Lord, I'm available. Are we together now? Please hear what I'm saying. Nobody will ever be coerced or manipulated in this ministry to bring one naira for anything to happen in the gospel. No, 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 no. It will be wicked. And only a wicked man of God 
will continue to receive seeds from people and they continue to bless him and not be this is this is where sincerely speaking i have a little challenge with we men of god we continue to receive and collect from people but never empower them is wickedness is a scam do you know how available people will be when they are financially free financial freedom will help you know that there are not many things to be done in life most of the distraction is the pursuit for money it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep it's impossible to pay to pray three four five hours every day when your pocket is crying it's not true not in this country We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is King. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is King. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is King. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is king. Yahweh, Yahweh. Eh, 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 eh. Yahweh. Creativity, 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 that God will anoint people to be creative, do new things or old things in new ways, that you set a pace. My brothers and my sisters, let no man deceive you that there is poverty in Zaria. No, it's just that the avenue to find expression is smaller. But there are opportunities beyond your imagination. Every day, millions of Naira continue to exchange hands in this city by only a few people. Creativity. Creativity is not in the realm of men. You don't get creativity through education. Creativity is of the spirit. There is a spirit in man. What were you filled with the Holy Ghost for? There is a spirit in man. Jesus revealed a new way of saving men. Until then we used the blood of bulls. But Jesus came and showed us that the price can be paid once and for all. Never did they know that the Holy Ghost could come and stay on men. He would come and go. But a new thing came. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Listen, the instrument of survival in our generation today will be the spirit of creativity. The grace for uncommon inventions. I'm telling you this. Noah won, just like I'm warning. Noah won, just like I'm warning. And told them the rain is coming. I tell you, there is a financial holocaust that is hitting people. The Bible says it. That the earth of men will be brass and under will be iron. But there are people who will be preserved. A remnant that will be preserved. I came out this morning. I usually don't come out. And I decided to just come out in the afternoon. I didn't know it was this hot. When I came out and the, way, the, the sun, it was so serious. I just stood and I looked. I said, my God. And I said, this is my message, O oh Lord. This is exactly what is going to happen to people. Think of what happens when you stand in the sun for long. Headache, pain. Yet there are people who will have to be exposed to those things. And do you know the pain? When you hold all your children together and say, Junior, stand in this sun with me. And Junior is saying, is this how life was meant to be? And Satan now looks at him and says, Junior, come. There is a way out. And Gino says, Daddy, since you cannot provide, you are not a father. Our children will be more audacious than us. 
their generation has made them audacious. So if you are a father, you have to be a father indeed. A mother indeed. Otherwise, we will lose our children. And the law courts have been empowered to make sure you cannot take care of the child. They say, let's take care of your child. Meaning whatever we teach him, provided we are the ones feeding him. No government will feed my child. In the name of Jesus. No. No. I reject it. Koinonia will never stand in front of any government office waiting to receive welfare at the expense of the gospel, at the expense of the truth. But this will be a blind, foolish boast until you understand the power of creativity. Listen very carefully. God is teaching us something tonight that will save us. Exposure. Creativity. The mind that thinks. The mind that works. Spirit-inspired mind. The mind that can bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. Bet solutions. I was sharing with someone this afternoon of a woman that used to make, I don't know what she makes now, 500,000 in Abuja here. Jobs did not come and everything did not come and she was praying and God gave her an idea. And she went and met certain families that she can teach their children well. And she's not doing a general extramoral lesson. It's a VIP extramoral lesson. And it started like two children, three children, right in her house. And those students were behaving exceptionally well. But more than that, she was teaching them character. Character. And then she would play koinonia messages too. These children were changing in remarkable ways. And the parents started recommending their circle of influence. That's always what happens when you penetrate one circle. They will call the others like them to you. And like play, like play, this woman would collect 10,000 naira per month. As at the time that I was talking with her, she had like 50 children. Only God knows how much she has now. The gates of destiny will not open on its own. You force it. He said, right from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom suffered violence and is the violence that will take it by force. The spirit of invention. Listen to me. If you stay with the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, let something from the throne room come upon my mind for my generation. God can put something on your mind, something on your mind and change your life. Change your life. I saw a picture on the internet one day. The person's clothes, they wrote $400. Then his, his tie, they wrote $20. And then his head, they wrote $0. Are we together? That's a picture of our generation. Packaging. And there is nothing from the realm of the spirit. And I told you that resources only follow productivity. Is God blessing us? I'm already very proud and happy about many of us that God is granting grace. Not just to hustle, but to think. This, this praying in tongues must translate into blessing everything. It's not only power to shake. No. It must come upon your mind. Please lay your heart on your head in the next two, three minutes. And I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, let something come from heaven. Zakatoske Parakata from heaven, oh God. A creative idea from the throne room that I'll have the boldness and the courage to execute that will change my life. Please pray, please pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Creativity. 
Everybody writes books. But there is a way that God can anoint you to write one book in a certain way. And that book will bless people creativity. Koinonia messages today are blessing people because of the power of creativity. God gave an instruction and said, while people, the regular way is to have message stands at the end of a service and come and pick up. And God says, no, I will do it differently. Don't sell the teachings. I'm not saying selling teachings are wrong. But he said, just put them on, on Facebook and the angel of the Lord will take them to nations. That one creative idea. There are ladies here, you can have a creative idea. Listen, when you solve the problem of kings, you will eat with them. You, solve, you will eat with whatever level. Whoever's level you solve their problem, that's the, the realm you will eat at. Listen, there are some of you here, God can anoint you and put grace on you. You will design clothes that will, the person who will call you to surprise you. You will just hear a call and they will say, who is this? You say, come. Are you the one who brought this design? Come. It's not about many customers. It's about quality people. There are men that represent nations. Listen, listen. I want you to start solving the problem of kings. You have done well to solve the problem of mean men. That God will empower you to solve the problem of kings. 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 Gentiles have already come to your light. It's time for their kings to come. Their kings to come. Is it not in the Bible that kings will entreat your favor? That God will put something on your mind. On your mind. Grace. I heard about somebody. Please sit down. We'll soon pray. Sit down. I heard about a gentleman. True story. And I was sharing it with someone this afternoon. He sat down and this guy was going through a lot of pain. And he kept praying and crying before God. And the next thing he saw a mowing machine. Machine that cuts grasses. And he had some little savings. And he went and bought it. When he bought it, he went to knock the gate of a very wealthy man who has a big land. And said, sir, I'm a young man. I'm a graduate. It's just that I didn't have um, any, uh, you know, no employment. And I just bought a machine. I know that there are young boys that cut grasses, but my machine, I can mow it down and then pack everything. And the man looked at him and laughed. And said, I'm impressed. These are the kind of men I want. You're welcome. Come in. And he came in and mowed the man's grasses. He was so well. And he told him that not only the grasses, I can also trim the flowers. Listen, the person I'm telling you today is a millionaire. He deals in everything that has to do with it. He bought these machines. They mow houses for wealthy people and then they sell flowers. Flowers. They, to the point that he even imports certain varieties from a crying graduate to a praying one. And something comes from heaven and changes your life. For as long as we sit down and continue to tell ourselves one day it will go better. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you. You will find out that time is going and the only thing increasing in your life is your age. Are we together? I know a woman. A dear precious woman in Lagos. Every time I have the privilege to go there and around that ministry, I'm very quick to order her, her products. Health drinks. Completely organic. 100%. Because the need to live long and live healthy. You see, when you are poor, it's not a concern. Because the work you do will not even allow fats to remain in your body and all of this. But by the time God helps you small, you find out that at a level is a serious concern. And this, this woman started selling health drinks. And, you know, beautifully packaged. And only God knows how much she makes. There's a lady from Joss, a precious lady. She may be listening now. She came for Koinonia here with a product. She worked for somebody and came and God gave her ideas, a combination for weight loss, healthy, organic weight loss products that is cheaper and affordable, 100% organic. 
And that lady blessed. I saw it. I was so impressed. When I went to Joss, I told the lady, I said, put it and take it and go and give my parents. Let them take it and let them be blessed. The goal is not far from you. When the spirit of creativity comes on you, you will see what others don't see. It's true. Anything can bless. It depends on how it is served. Are we together? There's one mama that sells kunu. Kunu, sorry for those of you who are not in the north. It's a drink, a local, you know, drink that we take a lot here. I tell you, there's a woman that sells that and the way she does it. Even, you know, sometimes you just want to get all of these things and she can supply you whether a gallon or whatever it is. Please, my brothers and my sisters, lay your hand on your head again and command creativity to work for you. Rebuke laziness. Rebuke excuses. There has to be a way out of it. The warfare that is executed through creativity. Only creative men can survive upon that mountain. There is a way out. There is a way out. There has to be a way out of struggling. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Let me tie it up somewhere so that we'll round up for tonight. Creativity. Creativity. The third key to productivity. One is exposure. Two is creativity and innovation. Number three is competence. You want to be productive. The third key is competence. The ability to standardize your results. Hmm. Competence. The ability to standardize your results. Maintain quality. Predictable quality. Predictable quality. Anything that comes from you has a predictable expectation. I know if you are a lesson teacher, I already know what a child will get because you are there. If you are a chef, I already know. The food cannot be delicious today and nonsense tomorrow. You are not competent. Competent is a product of mastery. The mastery of the laws that govern that operation. Predictable competence. Listen to me. When your results are not standardized, kings will not come to you. Kings do not come to a fluctuated result. Stability for kings means mastery. So when you stabilize and standardize your results, whether spiritually, intellectually, or otherwise, you call the attention of kings. The leaders in any industry are men who have standardized their results. You cannot keep fluctuating forever. As a man of God, as a businessman, as a career person, there must be a level of standardized results. Everybody say competence. Be strict on yourself. Set a high standard on yourself. Don't celebrate mediocrity. Just because you do something small, challenge yourself. Think global, think global, think global. You can start small, but let your mind be global. Are we together? I was listening to one of Dr. Miles Munro's mentees and he was sharing a story that when Dr. Miles was alive, he looked at him one day and he called his name and he says, young man, you have a fabulous grace. You are charismatic, but you are not, you are not vocal and articulate. And if you want to go into the communications industry, you have to be vocal and articulate. The gentleman came from a background of all these yo-yo boys. And so they just speak slangs all around. And he said, no, if you want to talk to presidents and talk to great people, you want them to call your attention, then you must pay the price to learn. And he says, wow, he was touched. And he made up his mind that he was going to take an extra program to work on himself. He went that far. And that gentleman today is the one who heads Miles Monroe's church. 
Dr. Burroughs. He made up his mind that he was going to develop himself. Learn to delay gratification and insist until you are competent. Don't wear tomorrow's clothes today. You will walk naked tomorrow. Don't eat tomorrow's food today. You will die of hunger tomorrow. Don't be ashamed of rising gradually. But insist. Insist. I got to find out that a number of our precious ladies here are fashion designers. And for one of them, when I got to see what she does, I was blown away. I was, I was, so, I was impressed beyond imagination. I said, you mean you do this? said yes I said no if this is what you do then the sky is your limit the world needs to know that you do this listen let me tell you when you are competent don't be afraid to let the world know that I am here you bring embarrassment to yourself and all those who are connected to you when you have not done your assignment and then you are calling the attention of the world the fig tree had no fruit but it was calling the attention of Jesus. When Jesus came hungry, he caused it. That's what will happen to any man that calls the attention of the world when you are not ready. But when you are ready and you've done your homework, please stand tall and tell the world that with all humility, God has put something here. Come and see. That's why we boldly open up and we tell people, God is doing something great in Zaria. Come and see. When I travel by the grace of God to go for ministrations, I go with confidence. I know that the people will never be the same because the message is powerful and there is grace that backs the message. There's nothing the devil will do about it forever. That's why I continue to train and challenge you. My brothers and my sisters, when you become competent, the kings of Zaria will call you. When you become competent, you can be in Zaria and the kings of Abuja will call you. The kings of everywhere will call you. They have not called you because they are still studying you. And they are noticing the fluctuations around your results. Standardize your results and watch the desperation of kings. Is God speaking to us? Be competent. Don't be small. Oh, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. What do you do? Just because you can eat your food does not mean that's the food of kings. Challenge yourself. Are we together now? One time, a great man was celebrating his birthday and they just thought to make him a nice cloth. And my tailor was called upon and told to sew for that man. A very, very big and wealthy man. And then he was encouraged to do a good job. And I'm sure he may be listening now. And when he sewed the clothes for that man, from that time, that man started calling him. Now he asked him, I heard recently again, to make another set of clothes. Let me tell you, competence is addictive. When people meet competent people, they don't easily let them go. No, there are not many competent people in the world. You can only complain for a while, you will come back. Be so competent that you become an endangered species. I remember years ago, a dear woman was getting married in Zaria and she went to bring in a, a what they call this people that makeup artist from Kano. And I asked a question. I said, does that mean there is not one of my dear people here that is an exceptional makeup artist who will like you to ruin her face on her wedding day? The wedding day is not the day of trial and error. If you are not competent, provable competence, kings and queens will not call you. Listen, when you become competent, you can name your price. And the world will still say thank you. Is God blessing you? Competence. You need to shake off poverty. Don't just sit down and say, Oh God, um, now that the job is not coming or what I read. No. God is giving you a mind that can sit down. 
Listen, Koinonia, I told you that I will never pastor a people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, but poor and broke and mediocre. I will not be that man of God. For as long as you are under this grace, you must be balanced. And that includes your finances. I trust God for times when by the grace of God, your children can come and at age 10, they are happy. They are focusing on matters of destiny. You are not waiting for them to become 18 years fast so that they will marry and come and pay you back. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in your life tonight. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life is changed. Listen. Some of us, our parents may have failed, but turned them into a success by being successful. So that they can say, my assignment was to give birth to you. And since I gave birth to you, I may have failed in every other thing. But because you arrived successfully, your success has turned me back to a success. The mother of Jabez called him Jabez because of sorrow. I don't know what else she called him when he, become, he became an honorable man. There are names that are given to you when you are blessed. Your parents will find names. And coin names that represent the excitement you have created in their spirits. Are we together? Being in Zaria is not a cause. Being in the north is not a cause. Being a Nigerian is not a cause. And the secret is not running to Canada. The secret is not running to Europe. There are people under bridges in all of these nations. It is the grace that follows you and the intelligence that God gives you. Are we together? By the time we are building our international headquarters, these are, there are people here that will single-handedly by the Spirit of God, say, Apostle, look, we are writing this. Let this not be an issue. Not moral support. No. That people like here who will be so blessed and sign a million Bibles and say, please take them to the Northeast. Noiseless impact. Are we together now? There are many of our children in this ministry. Some of them, you see them come, and many of them is only God that supplies for their daily bread, and is only God that takes care of them. When will God bless you to a point that one day you look at one child and say, young man, you were about to fall, but because I came. Ah, I am alive. That was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. You know your impact by what people do around your birthdays. That you have to remind people that it's your birthday is a sign that your destiny is closed. People should be excited and know that my God, this blessing to my life, what an opportunity to celebrate you. There are people today, you still look at their grave, and their grave is a sermon. You can stand on their grave and live inspired. He came, he saw, he conquered. Productivity. The ability to trust God for an innovative spirit. Listen. Turn your ideas to products and services. So you are only worthy of reward when your ideas become products and services. Served with excellence until they become products and services, you are only worthy of commendation, not reward. I cook once in a while. I'm very good, but that's just how I am. Hey. 
that means that the financial squalor that is coming will meet up with you. I don't know what the best restaurant in this city is. I don't know. But I thank God that there are people rising already. Here and there. It is my goal and my prayer that the best of the best of the best of the best of every level of productivity will come out from this house. It's not in a competitive manner. Listen. One of the benefits of productivity is the privilege of influence. The moment you are productive and you lead a field, you are given grace to mentor, to build, to set the rules that guide the understanding of other people. And this is one of the keys to kingdom advance. You never become influential as a mediocre. It is when you, when you set the standard and you lead the field. Are we together? You must challenge yourself. I vowed a vow to myself while preparing for this meeting. I said, Apostle, you have not started. Oh, you have not started. The trickles of results that God has given, praise God for it. But Mr. Man, it's time to get to gear two and do something higher and greater. It is time for a certain levels of graces. I was praying and I said, Lord, give me the anointing for three diseases. One, cancer. Two, HIV. We have seen it in pockets, but I mean that a signature upon your life. This is what money cannot buy. Lord, grant that grace. Let it not be by mistake again. I don't want people to come and testify and say I was healed of cancer. Apostle laid hands and I said, I'm not even sure. No. I want a realm where we know that you came here and we can smile and say, Mr. Man, dust your vision. Put your books back in order because you are walking away free. There is a grace. It's not out of jealousy or a need. No, 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 no. It is how you become a blessing. And then kings will come to you and say, our money means nothing in the face of this situation. And you tell them, there is a system in this kingdom that can help men. The little grace that God has given me, I am blessed and humbled. As I see it change the lives of people. When people come with situations that I know are within the grace that God has given me, I'm excited. I, I feel happy for them because I know they are coming back with a testimony. If that does not happen to you, what kind of man of God do you want to become? When you become a conventional man of God, you will be a competitive man of God, a jealous man of God, an angry man of God, and eventually a backsliding man of God. But there is a height, an exceeding high mountain where God keeps you. And from that mountain, you can tell people, look at what Jesus can do. Say, don't mention Jesus. Say, that's all I know. And they say, if we drive him, we're in trouble. So we have to leave you there. And you shout it at the rooftop. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. That's the anthem of our generation. Productivity, the ability to be useful, the ability to be needed, the ability to force a space for yourself for the sake of the kingdom in the table of destiny. You may not have been born with that privilege, but my brother and my sister, let me tell you this. There are men and women who did not have any advantage. 
But they made up their minds that they will challenge themselves. That out of Zaria, God will spring forth something that will shift this nation. Men and women who defy unemployment. Men and women who defy mediocrity. And your productivity will open the gate. And the king of Tyre will watch you. And he will pass and sit on that mountain. And call for nations to come. And they will come. Listen to me. We are going to have a few minutes to pray. And just where you are, I'd like you to pray. Are we together now? Worship team, just give us, just play something for us. And then you pray. You are going to cry for your destiny. Tonight's prayer, you are not interceding for anybody. You are saying, Lord, there has to be something uncommon in my life. I'm tired of mediocrity. I'm tired of having what everybody has. It is the reason for jealousy. It is the reason for envy. Lord, put something upon my life. Something uncommon. Are you ready to pray? Expose my mind. Grant me the grace to be creative. Grant me the grace to be competent. The endless expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of God. No excuse for poverty, no excuse for failure, no excuse for mediocrity. Lord, I cancel those excuses tonight. I cancel those excuses. I cancel those excuses. I have a mind that thinks, I have a spirit that can think. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty can make men of understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to cause the spirit of laziness. Laziness. Physical laziness. Mental laziness. Whatever will be, will be. I'd like you to receive the spirit of aggressive pursuit. Aggressive pursuit. One door closes, you force another one to open. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of giving and choosing. Outside, pray. Inside, pray. Those following online, pray. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. Alabaranda sabaraka goshe predegata. Lekete parusa segete marakata. Embrakata barato soto prekete. Kabrende segete lebatariya davo. Rakata baba kata baranda stada baka tos. Embrakete rakete barato stade kete. Rakete kete kete balada bo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. We are praying. Two more prayer points and we are done. I believe in diversification. But I also believe in mastery. You are going to pray. Lord, what is that one thing? The area you want me to be a master in. Incontestable. Unarguable. Reveal to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, is it agriculture? Lord, is it finance? Is it in my career? 
is it in the academia? I cry for the spirit of revelation. Show me, oh God, the one thing that will set me apart and bring honor to your name through my life. Please pray. Concentrate and pray. Concentrate and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up, please. One book that was written by T.D. Jakes, Woman Thou Art Loose, one idea from heaven, he wrote that book and it changed his life and set precedence for a conference that is one of the premier world conferences today for women. One book, Purpose Driven Life, that a man wrote, changed and turned his life around. One idea called Uber in an app that was invented far away from Africa is working like fire here in Africa. What if God gives you the cure for AIDS? What if, do you know that I found out that there is no sickness on earth now that does not have a medical cure? I mean that has been found. HIV is not incurable. I mean medically. I, I'm not pleased with due respect to the medical council and all the medical people. These are my personal opinions. I'm not speaking on behalf of the ministry, nor am I speaking on behalf of the nation. I'm telling you by spiritual revelation and by intelligence that there is a cure for it. There is a cure for cancer. There is a cure for all these things. The only problem is that those who have found the cure have not learned the systems. And because you belong to a harsh world and a harsh environment, that this, most of these things were in many respects intentionally manipulated to victimize Africa. So an individual that rises like that will be fought over. But there are cures. Not one, not two. I have spoken personally with people that have these cures. Let me tell you sincerely. Are you ready to pray? Lord, that one thing that will put upon my life, that will take the sorrow of lack and want forever, that I can leave something for my children's children. Please pray. last prayer point and we are done for tonight. Take my eyes to the problem that holds my wealth. Take my eyes. Don't run away from problems. Take my eyes. Show me, oh God, in life and destiny. Where is the problem? Show me the Goliath that my throne is connected to. I'm not afraid to face that Goliath. It may take time, but I will prevail. Lift your eyes and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, take my eyes, take my mind, take me to the problem, the issue that I can solve, that will bring me to my financial Sabbath, that will take my family out of a realm of obscurity and mediocrity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I shared with you, listen, I shared with you some time here about a dear man of God who was going to pray for me. I, you know, just went, sowed a seed into his life, and then he looked at me and it was time for him to pray for me. And he said, Oh God, create a problem that only him can solve. You know, I stood there with my heart that is for the body of Christ. I said, I don't know if I like this kind of prayer. I mean, I don't like things that try to outshine people. I'm not that kind of person. And so what kind of prayer is this? But the man had prayed his prayer. But when I sat down and I thought about it, I knew that he was not speaking from a standpoint of jealousy. Listen to me. Your similarity, Mike Modoc says, creates your comfort. It is your difference and your uniqueness that creates your reward. Nobody will pay you for being like another person. They will only reward you for being unique. There can be 20 of you in a city, but you can stand out. The same way there are millions of men of God across the earth, but there can be a unique imprint of God's grace upon your life. Are we together now? I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, the grace that wakes people up in the night and shows them witty inventions may that grace rest upon you let me pray it again the grace that wakes people then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night. Then the secret, there is a grace that taps men in the night and say, wake up, your destiny is about to rise. May that grace speak over your life. Listen to me, I decree and declare that every fear of failure, whatever is keeping you down, People will laugh at me if I fail. How can I take this step? I cast that spirit in the name of Jesus. For those of you honestly trusting God for capital, that you know that you have sincerely done your homework, you just need that push. I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I declare, in a way you cannot explain, I channel resources to you. I channel resources from the ministry of destiny helpers. I channel strange resources to you in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, your lifting will require a networking of like minds. I connect you to similar minds in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, you are already doing great things, but you just need the courage to scale up to a level that becomes enviable. Both the courage and the grace, I release it upon you now. Listen, there are some of you, God is calling to dimensions that people fear going there. Because nobody has gone there and succeeded. I exempt you and I declare you will succeed. For some of you, this innovation will come in dreams. You will lie down to sleep and your whole sleep will be a dream. You will wake up and do exactly what you saw and prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that from tonight. That between now and next week. That everybody under the sound of my voice here must find an area in his life where you can channel energy to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. And let me pray finally. Your soul will never go down because of money. Your work with God, your passion for the things of God, your sense of honor, your sense of submission, your, your sense of recognition of the authority of God 
will never deplete while you rise. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me tell you, you are going to hear touching testimonies from this prayer that I prayed. It's true. Give Jesus praise. Father, we bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I open up the gates of cities, the gates of territories, and I speak in the name of Jesus. A level of grace. May your saxophone stop being an instrument. May it become a weapon from today. A weapon of healing. You and your entire team. Let it burn like fire in your spirit. Like fire upon your spirit. Never to be the same. You will sing with the sounds of the heavens. And everybody that hears that sound will know that your communications are of the spirit. There is a grace that lifts men. You can try, you can struggle, you can beg, you can connect. No. See, every time, listen, every time you see consistent results, regardless of the situation, there is an anointing. Please, learn this. There is an anointing. There is an anointing that translates men, swallows up the weaknesses of people. May that be your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will give you wisdom. Let your ministry enter another dimension. I pray for character for all of you. See, this is usually the problem. Listen, let me, I'm, I'm teaching, you are learning. The most important aspect of the anointing is the character to maintain it. Not the anointing. Because you see, the anointing is very charismatic. The most powerful ability of a man of God is self-control. The ability to keep quiet even when you have what to say. The ability to walk within the jurisdiction of the grace apportion. There are many of we people, we don't have self-control. Especially over an opportunity like this. Everybody now wants to show and you do not know where God has stopped and you want to continue to stretch it to show you are anointed and then you step out of the spirit and begin to walk in the flesh. Because some of you are here for this same anointing. But you see, the, it's not just the anointing. Believe me. This is not an issue of prayer and fasting. It's an issue of knowing God and understanding His ways. God is only committed to backing what He instructed. If He did not direct you, He will not back you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. John chapter 3 verse 16. Let's just look at scripture quickly. And then we'll pray. There is a lot that God wants to do tonight. These guys have already stared the anointing. And you see the thing with the anointing is once he's stared, it doesn't stop. It doesn't know whether it's miracle service or Easter. John chapter 3 verse 16. I like you all to be sensitive. The anointing has been stared in up in this place many of you do not know what the staring of the anointing is the moment your eye sees there is a relationship between your heart and your eyes so once your eye sees it immediately your spirit is open and the moment your spirit is open the spirit of god starts moving he doesn't care whether you are preached or not because that's his desire hallelujah and usually once the anointing starts moving, it's very difficult to contain it because the hearts of people are open. In the name of Jesus. 
hearing the sound of thunder i know this is not physical i'm hearing a sound of thunder like lightning is coming upon people right now in the congregation why do i see this it's like the sound of thunder. thunder it's what i hear in my spirit Hallelujah. Please pay attention. The meeting is on. I'm seeing ministering spirits. It's a class of angels. I'm seeing them walk inside and outside. Just let me do what is happening. Ministering spirits. There are not many times I see these kinds of angels. I'm seeing them walking inside and outside. Ministering spirits. They are angels that impart strange levels of graces. Ah, ah, yeah. They will touch you where you are. It will be like fire. They will touch you where you are. As they touch you, they release your miracles. As they touch you, they release your breakthroughs as they touch you they break those chains nah. they are touching you on behalf of families touching you on behalf of families skatapakatabara <laughs> direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction and end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction 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 for where to settle down geographic location direction is coming by the holy ghost direction somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you is coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction
Aleluya. I'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone. And the Lord is saying, take it out. Lord, where are those people whose destinies have been buried? As I'm speaking right now, inside and outside. Right now, right now. As I speak, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, where you are sitting, you will receive a visitation. I pull it out. This is a miracle service. I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny. Something is happening to you where you are. Something is happening to you where you are. Begin to receive it by faith, like the dew of heaven resting in this place, inside and outside. Lord, we receive what you are doing. sit down if you can those under the anointing just leave them John 3 16 I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they, when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing a name like augustina augustina 
there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as it's happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow the anointing of the spirit is touching somebody outside the Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah I'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family God wants me to minister to you are five five people I don't know if there is a mother I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son please listen don't worry about what is happening just let me have your attention please he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now Please help her wrap her I command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ hallelujah so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called jesus because there are many people who can preach 
to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of jesus christ and then the bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister to you. are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today, in heaven, if you know it, just sing it with me. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am. I will love you. You are the only one that I gave your life. Hallelujah. So he gave, like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money he gave he donated and jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things listen jesus did not just come please i want you to pay attention it's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray jesus did not just come to show us how god looked alone he came to show us how we should look so when he walked upon the earth he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created he was invincible the Bible records above situations above circumstance with unlimited power yet a man of extreme self-control he knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet there would be so many sick people like the ten lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry
people try to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 i can of my own do nothing as i see my father do so he came to show us the prototype of the true christian life a life that is completely yielded to the will of the father void of self-ambition void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of christ a life that is crucified with christ are we together now and then the bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago we know it as the passion of the christ it started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him john chapter 6 says except you eat my flesh and drink my blood you cannot be part of me you cannot have my life so while they were taking the communion they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know i have the power to free you he said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life are we together now it's one thing to give your child it's another thing for the child to agree he can refuse jesus had the right to refuse in fact he was tempted to negotiate it he said father if it be possible you are the all wise god there is another way you can do this thing but then he remembered nevertheless i told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood. He gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen, listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Right? He said every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down i'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down i'll call you now they're all looking at me um sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name aaron kelvin just get somewhere they can sit around and i'll attend to you now just five minutes let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir i offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way 
while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is i'm watching because love is a verb are we together now i am what all kinds of things have told you they love you but they left you but jesus said watch my love i'm not going to make noise about it first turn back and while they flogged him he said if it's for you i will still go the extra mile and they flogged him the father gave him he gave his health the father gave him he gave his prosperity the father gave him when we say his life let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you're watching movies a 33 year old man naked children watched him adults watched him people mocked at him and said you claim to be a king and he said this is all for you are we together blood dripping out from every part of his body every time he was tempted to give up he said no if i give up where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last name you still will not be able to take it see listen if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 
Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings. Having to atone for your sins by your own strength. I brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God. He said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation. My own access. Like I organize a program. And I invite someone. And while you are about to drive him. I say no, no, no. That's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest. He also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned. And this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell. And met Satan. A discussion transpired. And Satan said remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam and every man that came from him. Let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1. When you read downwards. I am he that was dead. But now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth. Access to dominion. Access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected. Watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking. And doing all of the things he did. Man would not be able to partake of it. Because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this. Because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations. Meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess or of, of justice begins to speak. I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price. I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven. We see that coronation. The psalmist gave us a revelation and from Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says a name, an office, an identity was given to him in heaven. To sit upon that throne. Are we together now? And the Bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption, man's vindication must pass through him. Meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man. A man is only justified when he justified. The father put it in his office. Are we together? Watch what he did. When he sat down on that throne, he told man, there is another dimension you do not know. I know that I paid the price for you. But I want to teach you another dimension. We paid it in covenant. Listen. You did not participate in anything. But out of my love, I took you and made it as though in me, you were the one who paid that price. So not only did he die for you, you died in him. Are we together now? So in Christ, every man's iniquity, every man's... Um, basis for accusation was nailed in Christ Paul saw this in Galatians 2.20 and he said I have been crucified with Christ 
nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ is an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we are in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what jesus did that's not where i'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of god's life we believe but what do you believe are we together you can believe the shepherd believe me you will not be saved believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation are we together believe in him who is him the bible i love the way the bible puts it as many as believed in him see that brothers and sisters i am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me are we together a child believes a father a worker believes a ceo a Jimmy's daughter believes in her father she doesn't believe in a ceo we believe in a jimmy adegbeye the multi-millionaire that's what you believe you will never get fatherly love from that dimension are we together now you may get financial advice you may get intelligence you may get all of this i believe in professor femi you will get the intellectual dimension there is a dimension of god you must believe to have life many of us have believed him as a healer you can be healed and still go to hell please hear me many of us have believed him as a savior you can have i mean you can have a what do we call it a, as a shepherd what dimension of him have you believed i will tell you now ready there is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the lord 
shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen, please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believed that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned. Shall not perish. Here it is. But have money. But have. The word everlasting is a wrong interpretation. Everybody has everlasting life. Everlasting life is life that does not end. Your, your life does not end. You only change location to continue the living. That's why we never say, will you spend eternity? You must spend it. The question is where? Are we together now? Thank you. Don't mind this, my funny friend. Where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend. You must spend it. The word eternal life there is the word divine life. Is the Greek word zoe. I know you've heard it. Many of us quote it, but just listen. The word zoe, listen. Let me describe it for you. It's a life that does not want depend on any external impute for its sustenance. It's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself. Are we together now? Like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life. When you receive that life in reality, the Bible says certain things will begin to change. You see, the life is a programming. The moment it enters you, it deconstructs itself to different dimensions. Please listen. The life of God is not just a vague thing that comes up. No, 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 no. It is the life. That begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom. It is the life you have received. That begins to immune you. From the activities of darkness. Many people have not received this life. They want healing. But they have rejected the life of God. Many people have come out for altar call. Father, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you. This and that. But they have not received it. He said as many as received. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money from Pastor Lawrence, borrow money from uh, Promise and so on and so forth. And I say, take my ATM card. The point is, you don't just take it and hold it. When you take the card, something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. 
it starts altering your configuration are we together now and the holy spirit is the custodian of that life when he comes he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family people don't get married till they are 45 i'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life and the bible says he who has the son has eternal life zoe god's kind of life now watch this although you have that life it takes the ministry of the holy spirit please listen to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say i have an atm card can you use it i have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you we have been taught that it works automatically no sir no sir you can claim to have the life and still die of sickness now this is where satan's ministry comes the thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life i should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like mere men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a cause i tell you hear me brothers and sisters 
because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God, speakings according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left. But he said, as it is now, we do not yet see all things. Are we together now? So, you have come to answer the altar call. The life is in you. But you went back. And the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in Christ. The truth is they don't believe it. They just know let's fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this is a sign that he's an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh-huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing, you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple. But it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life. And all its content is a way. The life of God. That can become any and everything. Any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. 
Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time. So the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that light begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter. And Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ and I really believe in his word but I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then it says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push God aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming and you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit. So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception. In a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me I fear God it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith... You believe I am able to heal you. 
you were convinced based on the report you had and now i gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of god's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor there are so many people listen to me who are trusting God for all kinds of things here I'm teaching you how to get results tonight God is not a herbalist there is a participation Ejimi, this is a gift for you what is he supposed to do watch this his response now he's standing up it's a sign that he believes me I can choose to hide it please sit down sir sorry I'm using you hope I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband hallelujah Ejimi, do you believe I'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god looks for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir romans chapter 8 please romans chapter 8 let's look at verse 35 romans 8 35 just that one scripture and then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister romans chapter 8 35 okay give us from verse uh, 32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a christian if you are a child of god this is good friday well even if you are not a child of god read i will soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently it's about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this i've been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do 
I am that I am Is there anything Too hard for me to do I am that I am yeah. Is there anything Too hard for me to do I am that I am Hallelujah If the father Did not give Jesus It's like a man Listen It's like a man who vowed to punish Every offender And he saw his wife And the guy said I'm a just person And he punished his wife Then somebody throws a and says Oh God you know we are Nigerians What do you think he's going to do? You say, that's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen, if it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake, then I assure you, Whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here. All kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, uh, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says but can they really hear your voice we are going to pray the only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say Lord I lift my faith I'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray I have a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able. Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must leave tonight listen please
just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet mountain of financial hardship mountain of cancer mountain of mediocrity Oh, you must go, you must go in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say after me tonight in the name of Jesus the faith of God is at work in me I have the faith to receive I have the faith to believe I have the faith to respond please listen do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4 don't turn there the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me sit down sir watch this he says they saw a man who had been there and he, he he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms peter and john and he, he said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when I began to minister here, the Lord was speaking to my spirit. Who gave me a guarantee that the power of God will move? But as I began to speak, I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say lord i put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh god we are here on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything 
my all to Jesus Christ. Or you are saying, man of God, I have come out for an altar call before. But for some reason, honestly, the pressures of life have pushed me and I need to make my way straight with the Lord. I'm tired of where I am. Those two categories of people, inside and outside, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now. God bless you. Quickly, please, I'll count just one to five. If the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, don't sit down thinking about it. Make your way very quickly. One. Two. Run, run like there's fire on the mountain. Especially those outside. Please, you need to run. Run to Jesus. As you stand here, please keep talking to him. Don't just stand looking at me. God bless you. Run to Jesus. Oh, win that war. Win that war tonight. This is an issue of your destiny. Koinonia, can you appreciate them? This is a harvest for the King of Glory. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired of living my life my own way, mismanaging my life. On this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you die. For God so loved me. He died for me. I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling. There are still people outside. Please run and catch up quickly. Quickly. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say, join them. Make your way quickly. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired. Tired of habits. Tired of addictions. Run to the cross. Come running. Come running. Come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming. Hallelujah. All of you in front, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to Jesus Christ. Please, no smiling and pitching one another. This is a serious issue. Please, pray. Open your mouth by yourself and say, Lord, I, I come to you genuinely. The Lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them. You wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you. Please, friend, be careful. Don't stand against anybody's salvation this night. Make your way to the front, please, and join them. I'm seeing three ladies outside. That the Lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others God is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away No man condemns you. The mercy, the mercy. what you have done this one decision remember Jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well I don't know what you are talking about but I've been crucified with Christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do I condemn you go and sin no more. Lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood, the power of mercy. You just sing, there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as I pray for them. Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters, Jesus can change your life. Don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus, from the 
depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes lord i won't give up lord i won't give up i keep holding on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i keep pressing on until my change comes please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them let's do it quickly please one minute everybody if you have the prayer request of of i understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's been streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the lord jesus christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming i i don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me god answers prayers here god gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of hezekiah hallelujah
when he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly and then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers next time, maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now, we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her John leave her whatever she wants you to just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a God that answers prayers here Remember, we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers, help them. If I were you, I would begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life. Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your request very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between kwara state and ekiti state and i saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind I was saying Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people 
they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we're pastors we went to minister in equity and we're going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play it was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah I, may, I was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had I said, what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called afe babalola university the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning i saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary he just died 141 i said i got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating i didn't see any hospital around there i just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of god 
you are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the, the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that I always believed it but now that I've seen it ah, there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football i just remember that old woman i said plane you are joking i'm surrounded by too many mysteries please believe me hallelujah 86 years still a lecturer 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand lift the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shepa baba kata altars 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 right now shake it 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 in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness 
whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ father we turn 
go ahead and pray lord my request is turned into a testimony i must testify by the anointing of the holy spirit standing upon the eternal counsel of god the hand of the lord itself will bring this to pass the burden is lifted in the name of jesus are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place in the name of jesus we command the foundations of the earth we command the firmaments we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request we lift every burden placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of god's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of jesus mighty and everlasting god standing upon your promise to us upon this altar the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus an end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus blind eyes open deaf ears open destinies moved forward in the name of jesus satanic burdens removed in the name of jesus we thank you lord because speedily according to the seasons of life they receive a performance in the matchless name of jesus we decree amen father hallelujah hallelujah please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can i saw a spirit and, and i'm praying for the students now please listen when i was outside ministering i saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names i pray for everyone here the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of jesus the kind of performance i pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus 
hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember at that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story I went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me I was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and I looked at that person and I vowed that till I die till I go to be with the Lord I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead I made that determination from the depth of my heart. I said, Lord, if you cannot honor me, let me die like that. I pray for someone here. See, listen, if doors are closing against you, it's demonic. Don't ever say it's because I don't know so, so, so. Bad. If, if the person knew me, it's a lie. There is a mantle. The Bible says everyone loved Esther who looked at her. Like a garment, you can wear it. I pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray.
pray pray for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 